Hey, it's Chase and Walter, and this is Into the Outdoors Uncut. It's a chance for me to share an entire story before it gets cut up and made into 90-second episode for radio. So this is Mark Kaiser Uncut. I followed Mark's adventures through hunting season on Facebook and was truly amazed and decided to see if he would share his story and tell us how he got to this point in his career. So I got to this point basically on my own. <laughs> I grew up, you know, I, uh, I grew up in South Dakota, not right over on the uh, eastern side of the state, just north of Sioux Falls in a little town called Del Rapids. And my dad didn't hunt, but my grandpa did. And my uncle did. So I kind of lived vicariously through their hunts, although they didn't take me a lot. My grandpa would take me road hunting for pheasants. But I really got an interest in big game. And that's that just mesmerized me, antlers. And uh, so I learned a lot of the big game hunting on my own. In fact, almost everything, every style I do of hunting now, the way I hunt, uh, the way I approach hunts, everything was kind of... Uh, you know, you just, you learn it, you fail, you learn it, you fail. And, and it's brought me to where I was today. Now, how did I get into writing and all that? I really enjoyed art, drawing stuff. And I drew about a bazillion pheasants when I was young. And who wouldn't when you live in, you know, grew up in pheasant country over there in eastern South Dakota. But then it transferred again over to antlers. And then I started writing and doing photography when I was in high school and I, I actually sold my first freelance uh, photographs when I was in high school yet. And then I started freelancing while I was in college. And while I was in college, I had to make a decision. Do I want to be a game warden or do I want to be a journalist? And I fought that for the first two years of college. And I eventually was a journalist. Uh, and then the roads just kind of, I just kept freelancing. But I also worked for the state of South Dakota at that time for um, uh, about I think 14 years, at least a decade anyway. And I did promotions for them. So I, and some of my promotions were outdoor and I met a lot of the editors of these big magazines that we all read today, even outdoor life and uh, American hunter. And these people saw in me that not only was I a good, you know, used car salesman for South Dakota, selling South Dakota's outdoors, you know, come here, enjoy a good time, whether it was hiking, mountain biking, fishing, hunting, whatever. But also the fact that uh, I knew what I was talking about, especially when it came to hunting. So then they asked me to write hunting articles for them. And here I am today doing everything from TV to hunting to blogging to you name it. People think I hunt 24-7, 365 days a year. And in my mind, I probably am. But my work schedule is such that this time of year, starting in December, especially January, through early to mid-summer, I'm in my office writing. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not out doing stuff. I go coyote hunting. I go shed antler hunting. Uh, I scout, you know, a tremendous amount of country during that time. But I'm doing a lot of writing, photography, pa putting packages together. I do that so I can have September through November off, basically. Three months to hunt. And I, and I hunt almost the entire time. I, uh, my wife becomes a, a widow. Uh, my dog usually doesn't go with me. He becomes a, a little widow, so to speak. And uh, I, I really hunt hard. And I start out in September, sometimes in October, if I got a good antelope tag, I'll start antelope hunting, archery. But September 1st, I'm usually in the mountains for almost the entire month chasing elk with my bow and arrow. And then I move on to try to do a rifle elk hunt as well in October and then transition into white tails late in October through November, maybe into early December, maybe throw in a late season hunt. But uh, this year I started out in Montana, DIY, public land. I had a buddy with me for about a week, then he had to get back to his job. And I went solo after that. And that's nothing new for me. I do a lot of solo hunting in the, in the back country. And it, it took me 13 days, which is a little more than my average to kill a bull but i killed a nice raghorn bull up in the mountains of montana come home for a few days start getting ready for rifle elk season and i, I did a few other things in between there and then i was up into the mountains here in wyoming kind of in my backyard but uh same thing put in my hunting camp my wife helped me do that we went up you know about a week early got the camp set up and then a buddy of mine came up from colorado who's learning the unit i'm hunting he wants to learn it because he's requiring preference points Opening morning, I, I shoot the largest DIY bull 
on public land that I've ever shot. I've killed one bigger, but I was hunting with an outfitter at that time. We were doing TV, but this one really meant a lot to me because it's, you know, it's in, you're doing it yourself. You're on public land. You're up against every other hunter out there. And it turned out to be just a tremendously big six by six mature bull. And then getting him out was just horrific because it was such steep country. Uh, after that, I, I started on my tour, whitetail tour of America, went to Kansas, bow hunted. And usually I have a good hunt in Kansas, but this year the mature number of deer were down. And on this property, I have a pack with the guy that I hunt. We don't shoot young bucks. I could have shot a lot of nice deer that most guys would just be, wow, that's a cool deer, you know, but we want these deer to grow up. So I, I never did kill out in Kansas, but then I ran to Pine Ridge and started filming for deer and deer hunting TV. And we shot a nice mule deer there, went back to back, turned around, went back up to South Dakota further uh, to a buddy of mine near Mobridge on a West River tag, killed a beautiful white tail up there and just just terrible conditions sub-zero high winds snow uh but we pulled a pulled a really good hunt together for tv that's that's going to be one people i i hope really watch and then i moved over to montana and uh hunted eastern montana in the last hours of the season you know it's thanksgiving season's running you know, about ready to close and uh we were having a tough time finding mature deer there finding good deer but no mature deer. And on the last uh, hours of the day I, of the hunt, I killed a really nice mule deer up there. Tough getting him out too. <laughs> he died in just a, a horrible hole, but uh, we backpacked. I, I, we actually started dragging him and I said, this isn't gonna work. And I cut him in half and I packed half out on my back. And then the two other guys drug him fairly far up the hill. And then I went back down, helped drag it out. So it was a super busy hunting season. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I look forward to chatting with you and meeting you someday, too. All right. Awesome. Uh, Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. Take care. Thanks. A big thanks to Mark Kaiser, photographer, outdoor writer, host for TV hunting shows, and as he says, pretty average guy. Thanks, Mark. To learn more about him, visit his website, markkaiser.com, M-A-R-K-K-A-Y-S-E-R.com, and follow his adventures on Facebook. If you're interested in stories like this, you'll find all kinds of original hunting and fishing content on my website at chasenwalter.com. And please follow us on the socials, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and anywhere you get your favorite podcasts. Until next time, I'm Chasen Walter, and that's In Through the Outdoors Uncut.